Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this public information in regard to the downtown Brockton urban revitalization plan update. My name is Robert Jenkins. I'm the executive director of the Brockton Redevelopment Authority. Uh, tonight we have several speakers, but I do want to introduce the Honorable Mayor Robert Sullivan, who I know has another meeting, but we're very thankful, Mayor, that you will join us for the time that you can this evening. Yeah, thank you, Robert. I want to thank you. I'm up at Brockton High uh, School Committee meeting, policy meeting. So um, first of all, let me just say thank you. Thank you to the Brockton Redevelopment Authority, all the members of the board. Uh, I want to thank Councilor Fowell, Councilor Mendez, Councilor Texera. Uh, I'm seeing Councilor Nicastro. Uh, there's so many, so many folks that are dedicated to the cause of better development in the downtown. My chief of staff, Sidney Merrill, joined us as well tonight. And of course, uh, Chris Cooney from the Metro South. But let me just put the cards on the table. Um, Brockton is ripe for development. Brockton is a hot spot for many, many, many developers. Transit oriented, having three commuter stops in Brockton is really the catalyst for development, but also working in partnership with the city council, working on ties and TIFs and historic tax credits and the age dip. I was on a call this morning at 8 a.m. with uh, 13 different mayors. Rob May, the city planner who's on this call was, was on that as well. Um, I will tell you right now, we have 750 housing units in the queue right now downtown. 139 of those are relative to the HDIP program. So what we need to continue to do is foster a relationship of development for Brockton. Understanding that with market rate and affordable rate housing, um, really the sky's the limit. But we also have to have the amenities that come along with that. Brockton Beer, which is the first Black-owned brewery in the whole Commonwealth of Massachusetts, is going to be opening up real soon downtown at the old Kresge building. I want to thank, I see Jonathan from Trinity Financial. I know Ted Carmen's group is here. I know uh, Rob Corley from NeighborWorks Housing Solution. Um, there's so many different developers that understand that Brockton is a wonderful place to invest. The return on investment is real. And as mayor, my job right now is to cheerlead the progress. And we need to continue to leverage the relationship of all the developers, Brockton Redevelopment Authority, along with our internal city uh, economic recovery group. But it doesn't, it's not a silo. We need to continue to foster a relationship with the city council. City council has been wonderful working with development, development, development. And we will continue to build upon that, not just in the core of the city, although that's germane to the conversation tonight, but we need to look at Campello. We need to look at Montello. We need to do every corner of the, com of the uh, city of Brockton. We will do that, but we're only going to do it by sharing information, listening and learning. To be an effective leader, you have to listen and learn. So tonight I'm here as the mayor, as a lifelong Brocktonian, as a taxpayer, to listen and learn from all of you. But I'll tell you right now, when Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor uh, Polito came to see us, they were really awestruck of what's going on. It started uh, under Mayor Bill Carpenter. It continued under uh, Mayor Rodriguez. And listen, I'm gung-ho for development. We need to continue. It helps our tax base. But quite honestly, if you look at Chronicle tonight, it's highlighting what's going on in the city of Brockton from a historic component. So if we do not continue this, we will kick ourselves. This is generational. We'll use uh, ARPA money uh, to be able to leverage our ability. So my goal tonight is just to say, uh, number one, thank you. Uh, number two, we will continue to make progress. Uh, Robert Jenkins and Rob May have been privy to many, many, many meetings in my office with developers not just Massachusetts developers or Brockton developers, this is national developers because they understand that Brockton is really ripe for development. So I wanna just applaud all of you. I wanna thank uh, Trinity Financial who took the uh, original leap of faith from the city council and I was on the city council. We adopted chapter 40R smart growth zoning uh, and they're doing phase two right now. So um, let's continue the progress. Let's continue to share in collaboration and I'm really, really honored to be here tonight. And I thank each and every one of you profusely. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to do make an announcement that this is being recorded live. It will be recorded and on our website as well. Um, Rob May is here. And Rob, I want to introduce you. If you could want to say a few words, Mr. May, you'll have to lean over into the mic. Yeah, lean, in, lean into the mic. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't like sharing my screen that much, oh, but okay. go ahead, Rob. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Rob May. Director of Planning and Economic Development, and um, I work very closely with uh, Robert Jenkins in putting together this uh, urban renewal plan and executing it. Um, we also work very closely with uh, the mayor's office, and uh, I've got to say that the 
Mayor Sullivan has been a, uh, a real backer of development in downtown and development citywide. And um, while the COVID uh, crisis has been very difficult for a lot of people, and, and we've had a lot of deaths here uh, in Brockton, um, the mayor decided to keep construction open. And uh, we had two projects finish um, just this year that would not have happened had we shut down. And so I'm very excited um, and, and well, I'm pleased that he's um, been such a supporter and uh, looking forward to uh, looking forward to the future. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Um, just so folks know, <clears throat> this is really uh, kind of like an update report. Uh, we'll probably have to give one to city council in the spring directly, but this is more so for those in the community and interested, live, work, play downtown. What's going on? You see a lot of new buildings going up uh, downtown, a lot of development, as the mayor mentioned, citywide. Um, and just so you know, some of the folks in the audience, we have the elected officials, but I see we have some banks that are present here, Admington Savings. We have property owners. Mr. Willie Stadelman is here. I see some also some folks that are um, also online. I see Neighbor Works as well, the mayor mentioned. Um, Brockton Beer, I see they're here. But why don't we go ahead and just get started because this is really a listening, as the mayor said, listening session, but also we want to hear your comments on what we also can be doing for the downtown. I'm going to share my screen and over the last 30 minutes I became an expert at this. So let me just run through a couple of developments that we're doing here. Uh, share. Fantastic. Most of you folks know um, Zoom is now a way of life for all of us. <laughs> so um, if you have any questions, do put them in chat. I'm not sure if we'll get to them, but we'll also be on the BRA, BRA website. Rob May and I have talked about doing a blog for downtown uh, Brockton, uh, just so we can get people's input. Because now, as the mayor said, this is generational change for the city. We're going through a real renaissance downtown and not just downtown, through the whole city. So with that said, let me go ahead and start my little downtown Brockton revitalization plan update. Hopefully everyone can see that screen. If you can't, I'm sorry, because I can. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Excellent. Let's go this way. Fantastic. Here's a map of the urban revitalization district. <clears throat> One of the things that you can notice I'm going to read mine because I can see mine better right in front of me. There's a to the far right is a legend that talks about completed projects and investment projects. And if you look at it, you, you can see we've actually developed, I forget the count, Rob, it's probably close to over 200 or close to 200 units that we've completed that are private investment. And that also in, includes commercial development. Let me just say this because I know. Folks are saying, yes, housing is needed in Massachusetts, especially in southeastern Massachusetts. Brockton is the only city in Plymouth County. Um, the resources are there for housing. However, I know that the BRA board, and I think Suzanne Fernandez is my only board member here. Suzanne, want to say hello? Hello, everyone. Uh, these slides, you'll also see that there is some commercial development that's going on as well in the city. Um, let's move on to the next slide. 19 Main Street. You guys may know this is the old parish building. Um, Mayor, you know we've had our issues with this building. Um, this is one of the mayor's first uh, HDIP through New Vision Enterprise, 20 units. Commercial on the first floor, a bistro. Uh, this to give you what the vision of this is going to look like, a, a, a bistro on the first floor as well as two office commercial properties or spaces. Interesting thing with this particular property um, is that it was in really tough shape. The mayor decided to invest funds into this building. Um, it is a local uh, minority developer, black developer, Joseph Gonzalez, who is doing this development. Some of you may know Joseph. This is one that I, I believe last report, last month anyway, 
you reported about 70, 72% completed. The, I guess the biggest thing with this, and I don't think Joseph is on, on, on here, even though he was invited. Um, the biggest thing with this is now getting just the power, permanent power and heat. Um, can't do his finishes without heat in the building. And I know the mayor and I have talked to Eversource mm -hmm. and we're working with them to get that moving forward. Robert, if I could just jump in, what's important for those that might not be familiar with 19 Main is that it's walking distance to the Bill Carpenter garage, literally right, right there. So in terms of being able to have both, uh, you know, bistro uh, dining capabilities and also residential housing, the fact that the Carpenter garage is right down the street is really a win-win for, for everybody involved. Excellent. Good point, Mayor. It is within walking distance of a lot of these projects that you guys will see that are coming up. 93 Center Street, everyone's familiar with this building, the old furniture building that's currently under construction. Um, I don't know if Ted Carmen is on. I know he was going to join us. Mr. Carmen. I saw Jeff. I saw Jeff as well. Jeff, are you on? Uh, yes, I'm here. Excellent. This is, uh, uh, once again, one of the catalytic developments we identified early. Uh, as you know, the redevelopment took this property by eminent domain. Uh, they started work back in, was it, I know it was cold out, so it must have been November, October, November. We started work on that. Jeff, do you want to give us just an update on where you guys are at? And I can show people the conceptual picture of what this building is supposed to look like when it's finished. Jeff, how much commercial space in there? Uh, there's about a, a thousand, 1500 square feet on the first floor. Um, along Montello and, and Center Street. Um, we started construction in September. We're tracking to finish construction in about a year, so fall of 2022. Um, it's 55 residential units, 44 of those are market rate, and 11 will be affordable per the uh, 40R zoning you all mentioned earlier. So we'll start marketing over the summer for those units. Excellent. And as you folks know, this is a very, how should I say, very visible property very active corner of Montello and, and uh, Center Street as well. Uh, we look forward and are very happy with the progress that is being made on this property. I think the board can attest to it. Uh, we've been waiting a long time for that property. Hotel Grayson, um, let me just point out, we have a number of historic properties in, in Brockton as well. Um, there was some question on whether or not we should keep them. I think in the final answer is yes. Um, I think the board has kind of said we're going to keep as much of the, how should I say, texture of downtown as possible. The Grayson Hotel is under agreement with NeighborWorks Housing Solution. I know Tim said he was going to join us. Tim, are you here? I guess not. I didn't we'll see him in chat. Him yeah, we'll hold it against him now. But this is going to be 16 units of um, studio apartments. Um, this is fantastic. If you look at this, these had these windows are, are floor to ceiling windows, uh, 16 units, roughly anywhere from, I believe, 340 square feet to 410. Um, beautiful building. Uh, the design on this and the, the fact that we need an elevator in there, we've applied to mass development uh, as an expression of interest to actually do some of the design work for the elevator. Uh, in this particular building because it is not handicap accessible. It's also next door to their um, Sycamore on Main uh, development, which at night, if if everything goes right with this, <laughs> this is gonna be fantastic for Frederick Douglass. Um, the, the glass, the amount of glass in this building in its heyday was amazing. I think in the future, the glass, especially for the first floor, the visibility, the fact that you can look down Frederick Douglass from, um, what is it, Warren Avenue is amazing. Um, and once again, it's next to their new construction <clears throat> as well. Robert, if I could jump in. Um, I also just want everybody to know that um, we've taken walking tours with Secretary Mike Keneally and Undersecretary Stolba uh, Lieutenant Governor Polito uh, joined us in those as well, and Dan Rivera. Um, this is uh, really a linchpin in the area. Again, we all know about the Kresge building, uh, Brockton Beer, which is really a game changer. But the connection between the grace and the historic content of that 
It's something that the undersecretary and secretary were really raving about. Right across the street again is the Liberty Tree, where Frederick Douglass himself came uh, and preached. So um, if you're not familiar with that area, um, really uh, kind of hone in on it because this is going to be something special that for generations we're going to be proud of in the city of champions. Thank you. Agreed. Agreed. Most of you people are familiar with the Petronelli, 28 Petronelli Way, the uh, Hagler, where actually marvelous Marvin Hagler trained uh, in this facility that's also. Jeff, you want to tell us where we're at with this building? I know that uh, they've started some mobilization. I know that they're also working on the roof. Uh, yeah, sure. So this is the uh, the boxing gym, as everyone knows. Uh, so we're pretty excited to restore it. It's in it's been in tough shape. It basically didn't have a roof for ten years. So uh, what we've done is we pulled a demolition permit, a limited demolition permit, um, back in December. So for the last two months, uh, we've been taking out all the bad stuff in the building and getting it ready for um, putting in an apartment. So we're going to build eighteen market rate apartments, uh, no commercial space. Um, and so that should be, given that we were able to start demolition in, in January, um, we're tracking to have this project done by the end of the year, hopefully. Um, and we're, we're looking forward to opening it. Excellent. Robert, just one more thing, if I could. Um, what's so special about this area, number one, I want to thank Councilor Jeff Thompson uh, and the City Council for adopting uh, a new street. Marvelous Marvin Hagler Way will be uh, abutting this. Um, also, State Rep Jerry Cassidy was able to get 150,000 in the last state budget to, uh, to honor the middleweight champ and a, and a statue will be erected there. Um, I took a tour with Ted Carmen, you were there as well uh, with the counselor. Um, and what Mr. Carmen told me at that time is uh, the history won't be lost. They're actually gonna memorialize the history. Uh, the bottom with all that glass that everybody sees, it's gonna be lit up in the evening. So then when people are going down uh, the road or parking, um, they're going to be able to really understand the, the significance of that. So to be able to have uh, the work of the state delegation, specifically Rep. Uh, Cassidy and uh, the city council, all 11 members to honor Marvelous Marvin Hagler, that's a game changer. People will be coming for walking towards the downtown. And I know for a fact they are definitely going to go to this area. So kudos to everybody involved in that. Excellent. And once again, this is right across the street from the uh, Mayor Carpenter garage. Once again, 1115 Frederick Douglass Avenue. This is currently being negotiated with a private developer to do, once again, all commercial, 100% commercial development on this particular building. Uh, their concept calls for, once again, a flower shop, a bakery, a uh, restaurant. Um, one of the things they're looking at doing is above uh, working with uh, Brockton Conservatory of Music, uh, as well as office space. Um, in this building. Once again, this is taken from the um, initial idea of um, Blueprint for Brockton, our downtown streetscape, uh, having dining on the, on the sidewalk. Uh, once again, uh, hopefully we'll come to some negotiated uh, agreement on what's going in, but this is their concept. Let me um, just also say that this is actually a opportunity for everyone to kind of comment on what's going on downtown. <clears throat> um, Rob May is here, I'm here. We're here to answer questions. We're here to kind of look at what's going on. There are other future meetings that we have to have in the next couple of weeks. Um, I believe our next public meeting, Rob, is going to be the 15th of March. 8th of March. The 8th of March. <laughs> the 8th of March. It's only a couple of weeks away. Um, we'll be having that meeting also downtown. Hopefully, we'll be talking with Trinity to have it in the um, gallery space as well. Um, but here's an opportunity. If, you are, if you're afraid to talk, which most of us are not, you can put it in the chat. But if you want to raise your hand, and I see Councillor Farwell. Councillor, I think I can unmute you. X to unmute. No, All right. I, just want, I, I just wanted either the mayor or you to talk a little bit about the, the new public safety building. I know that uh -huh. it's a, uh, 
uh, the west side of Warren Avenue, but the city is putting up its $98 million worth of investment in the downtown. And I'm kind of cautiously optimistic that will send a message to developers that number one, we're serious about public safety infrastructure in the downtown area, but also you're going to have a lot of people moving in and out of that building at shift change and the other city departments that will be located there, I think is going to add to the downtown. So I'll let you or the mayor take it from there. If, if I could, and if I could, Robert, I also want to thank again, the city council, they've been partners in this from, from the beginning, $98 million is a lot of money, a lot of money, but it's going to be money spent in such a beneficial manner to benefit the city of Brockton. So um, when Councilor Farwell talks about, uh, former Mayor Farwell talks about um, this is going to be really a historic change. It's a city block. It's going to go from Highland Street all the way to West Elm Street. And $90 million is going to encompass four departments, IT, informational technology, where I am right now at Brockton High. This is where IT is based. They're going to leave and go to this brand new building. It's going to free up classroom space at Brockton High, better for the boys and girls and better for the staff. Uh, BEMA, Brockton Emergency Management, based out of the War Memorial, is going to be located there. BEMA has been paramount during COVID, helping us save lives in Brockton. And then police and fire. Uh, police station is long overdue. I mean, if you've ever been in there, I mean, that, that building's uh, way past its maturity. And then the, the, the Pleasant Street building, uh, where the fire department, the brave men and women are there, that was actually wired by Thomas Edison himself. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be able to transform from Highland Street to West Elm Street. And I will tell you, when we talk about those walking tours, every developer that comes to Brockton, we tell them that. And they say, wow, you are putting skin in the game, a $98 million investment. And we're going to get a really return on that investment. So um, when you're talking about Frederick Douglass, all that within the next five to 10 years, all of that is going to be transformed. So um, thank you for bringing that up, Councilor Fowell, because Warren Ave, as you know, uh, directly uh, runs parallel to, to Main Street. Another thing that's important this week is um, the Traffic Commission um, voted to uh, make two-way traffic on Warren Ave, from Spring Street, Highland Street, uh, down to uh, West Elm Street, all the way to Belmont Street, 123, the courthouse. So we're going to be able to not just have four departments, it's going to be a state-of-the-art technology-driven customer friendly, taxpayer, constituent, resident friendly building that all of us are gonna be so proud of. But that's showing developers that, listen, the city of Brockton, we, we put up, right? Talk is cheap. We put up, we act. Uh, and again, the city council support that. I'm really thankful for all the, the men and women on the city council. Excellent, Mayor. Uh, I, I do wanna point out about mm -hmm. the public safety building. Um, and as the uh, mayor said, once the old fire station is relocated, that's going to give us an opportunity to restore this historic building, bring new life and activity to it. Also, the old police station, uh, when that's finally vacated, um, the mayor and I have uh, had similar meetings like this, like that we're having right now. But um, we want to, originally we had said um, we should uh, see housing development there. The mayor and I have now come to an agreement that we're going to hold this property for commercial development. We think that because it's right on the tracks, there's an opportunity to um, bring new office slash lab to this area. The mayor uh, was uh, just uh, at a meeting hosted by uh, Metro South Chamber of Commerce with the uh, new director of the Mass Life Excellent. Science Center. And uh, we're continuing that uh, relationship that was forged there to try to bring new um, commercial office lab space to Brockton. And so in addition to that, we're, we also have the whole Lovett Brook uh, redevelopment plan that was just approved um, by planning. And, and we hope to then continue on to create an urban renewal district um, with the assistance of city council and we'll work on uh, the proper zoning for that area. So uh, there is a lot of office commercial development in our future. Yeah. One other thing I need to share with all of you, because it really is, I keep saying the word game changer, but it's a game changer and I'm the biggest cheerleader. And I want to thank Jasmine Bradshaw uh, from my office. She's social services director. Listen, we have a homeless population right now uh, in Brockton and no one chooses to be homeless. And there's variables on why people are on the streets, right? Mental health issues, alcohol, drugs. Uh, maybe they lost their house in the foreclosure epidemic. But one thing that I heard as a city council for 14 years serving as a council at large and 
I applaud, you know, David and, and, and Wynn and, and, and Rita uh, and Moses being a counselor at large, 28, you know, 28 precincts and seven wards. But um, folks were saying, hey, listen, we don't want to invest in Brockton because you come down Pleasant Street and there's all these homeless people walking around. Well, first of all, we've been working diligently with Father Bill's mainspring and John Yazinski, the CEO. Um, and there is a piece of property on Manly Street that is owned by the federal government. And um, they put it out to bid. And as mayor, I put in a bid because I thought it would be a good city asset. Uh, there's a law called McKenty Vento, which uh, trumps any city uh, if you provide uh, services for homeless folks. So Father Bill's mainspring will be eventually relocating to a campus setting, wraparound services. Uh, on the grounds that abuts the VA. And um, I did uh, bluntly say that I will support that because it's about compassion and helping folks. But I want Brockton, the city of Brockton, her first right of refusal to acquire where Father Bill's right now is next to Perkins so we can clean up that area. And so I'm proud to say that uh, John and Father Bill's have agreed to do that. So I'm gonna be working with the city council. Uh, anytime a city acquires something, it is a taking uh, under, under mass general law. But that's an area of the city of Brockton that will be improved drastically. Uh, and I know that uh, a Joffrey Anatole who uh, invested in the uh, standard modern building up there, um, you know, uh, there's going to be much more investment and that's clear and it's great and it's wonderful. Uh, and that needed to be shared tonight because when we talk about the core of the city, we typically talk about, you know, downtown Brockton. Um, and, uh, you know, I would even go farther up. Uh, and again, if you're looking at where Perkins Park is right now, uh, it's going to be transformed nicely in, in the near future. Excellent. And that's a good point, Mayor, to bring up is the um, right of first refusal that Father Bill's Mainspring has agreed to. So um, that's exciting news, especially uh, for those of us who work downtown. And uh, we've all heard the complaints. Um, Chris, you've heard them from your, your constituents as well. So. Uh, we recognize, and as the mayor says, no one chooses to be homeless. Um, so we look forward to that. Let me open it up. Um, this, since this is being recorded, we do have another 30 minutes. Let me open this up for any questions folks may have. Or... Um, can you also suggest that there is a chat feature? There is a chat that feature. That if you're not um, keen on being on screen, some of, us, into the chat. Some of us are shy. Um, there is a chat feature there that you can either ask questions or make suggestions. Right. Um, we have been incredibly successful, I think, in the last um, seven years with this partnership and in pulling together this, you know, the downtown action strategy, the urban renewal plan, the downtown diff, um, creating um, uh, 40R and amending 40R smart growth adding a housing development incentive program. Uh, we're opportunity zones down here. And so there's, oops, I'm half on camera and half off. Um, so we've been very successful and timing has been very important to us. And, you know, we're happy to report out the success, but we're also um, kind of hungry for new ideas and what else should we be working on? Exactly. And so, um, you know, we're soliciting comments over the next couple of weeks um, so that we can put together a, a proposal and, and see how that fits into our downtown strategy. So Correct. I'll hand it back to you, Robert. Sure. Um, and I just want to echo, um, this is just not the BRA success, the planning department success, the mayor success. This is all of the leadership in the city of Brockton, which is, I got to tell you, I've worked in a lot of communities. Um, we are unique in the fact that all leadership have the same ideas. We're all headed in the same direction. And that's, I got to tell you, that makes this job fun, <laughs> okay? Because um, without everybody heading in the same direction, the same ideas, wanting to see the same end goal is very impressive. I got to tell you. So kudos to the city council, the mayor's office, uh, my board, um, and all those of us who are in the, in the what I call the trenches, Rob. Um, yeah. talking to the developers and the and the landowners. And as I said, the banks are here as well with us. So Chris, I see you have your hand up. I do. Thank you. Kudos to you and um, the BRA and the, the city planner and, and the, now the city council and the mayor who are, are backing these plans. As you know, I've been here for uh, many, many years and I've seen fits and starts. And this is the most significant 
uh, traction that we've we've made as a community in many many years. Uh, I, it's nice to see that we could do four nights of this because you're, you just featured four or five buildings. There's, there's four or five others that are uh, coming uh, to the fore. There's four or five others that are already finished that are occupied. And there's four or five uh, people that are dreaming and hoping to see more of this before they put money in. Because quite frankly, uh, there's been some fits and starts in terms of support of these types of projects over the years too. So you do have some people sitting on buildings who are just waiting for others uh, to, to invest and have the city uh, back them and, and then they'll come to the fore, I think. So wondering if there's going to be, you know, a statement made, uh, maybe a resolution by the city council, uh, maybe introduced by the mayor to talk about a goal of growth uh, for residential housing units uh, to help solve the statewide problem. Uh, as we know, a lot of uh, companies are looking for population centers where they can find workers. And Brockton, as we know, is the largest city south of Boston. We're just so well positioned with all of the investment that's gone on here in terms of public infrastructure. Now with the public safety building, the new schools, the, the roads, the sidewalks, uh, a lot of the uh, uh, infrastructure, the rail station and, and, and all of that really does put us in a good position if we can herald to the rest of the world that we're ready for growth. So some of that, you know, we've seen in Quincy, where the first thing they did when they, before they started to really grow was they announced an increase in number of stories uh, of buildings. They went to 14 stories. Uh, and that made a real impression with developers that the city uh, meant business in terms of growth. And so I wonder if, if we can see some examples of uh, either commitments of growing uh, residential uh, in, in terms of percentages of, of population, or, and or just physically allowing uh, more stories in the city uh, to be constructed downtown on parcels or buildings that may not be uh, suitable for restoration. Yeah, I can jump on that. Uh, with due respect to uh, Mayor Coke and Quincy, they're just the city of presidents. We're the city of champions, and that's a clear distinction. Uh, we've always been champions. We'll continue to be champions. I can say that um, I'm, I'm actually speaking uh, at the chamber on Friday. Uh, I'm really excited about that. I did my, uh, my long, uh, long overdue inaugural address today. Catch it out on Facebook on BCA. And a shout out to thank you for BCA. Listen, we're customer friendly here in the city of Brockton. We're development friendly. Uh, every time I have a developer come, uh, I don't micromanage. I have the team. It's a team approach. Um, and I, I know for a fact, because I've served, if not with all the city councils, I know them all. They have the same vision as well. And um, you know, I, I'm happy to work, Chris, with the Chamber, with the Downtown Business Association, Montello and Campo, and ultimately the City Council. And President Lally is leading it, and it was President Fowell and President Azak when I came in. So, um, you know, I am uh, I'm going to share some, uh, I don't want to steal the thunder, but I'm going to share some information with you on Friday that you'll be, I think, extremely pleased with. But uh, let me say one thing. I had a, a gentleman fly into Brockton recently, and he's a billionaire. I mean, he's, he's in a stratosphere I'll never be in. Uh, but he came to Brockton because he, he heard about Brockton, Massachusetts, and he's from uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And he said to me, with all due respect, Mayor, I, I, I heard about Brockton on the bad things, the crime. I didn't know about the good things. So I expressed the fact that we had eight kids graduate from Brockton High that went to Ivy last year. Uh, I mean, Ivy League schools, think about that. And he said to me, you know what? I didn't know you had a Chick-fil-A and two Starbucks in Brockton. I'll be damned. I never knew that. So you know what? The little things add up. The broken windows theory is a real thing. So if we don't continue to market Brockton, it's a business, it's a $500 million, half a billion dollar business. If we don't market, we're going to be kicking ourselves. So, um, you know, Chris, all I can say is I know all the city councilors, I know all the school committee members, and we're going to continue to work together with them and the delegation. It's a win-win proposition. And uh, we have never been afraid to use ties and TIFs. Uh, I've put some forward. Uh, city councilors approve them. And all the tools in the toolbox need to be used, including the HTIF. It's key. It's paramount. And one of the things I want to echo in is that, you know, and I hear what you're saying, Kristen, about resolutions, but I've always been the one and I've always been taught through the 30 years or so I've been doing development management um, is that when this, when a municipality invests um, business, usually private business follows the fact that the city's committed to 98 million, and that's just the one that you can actually see. And we understand, Mayor, we talk to developers all the time. The first thing they ask is, 
What about the safety issue? What about the crime issue? How are you addressing? This is a huge investment, $98 million. Uh, my father used to say money talks and what walks, you know? Um, you guys, we're putting it, we're putting our, we're putting not just skin in the game, we're putting our money where, where, you know, it needs to be. Putting I think it's proof in the pudding, Robert. And, and, and again, I don't want to, I don't want to say too much, but think about this Trinity financial, right? They put 30 million bucks into the game. They're doing phase two right now. They would have walked away if Brockton wasn't business friendly. Ted Carmen is doing two projects simultaneously. I mean, these are real investments uh, and these are real players in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So I just, listen, I just think that um, we need to continue to showcase Brockton and, and market the heck out of Brockton and show the number one, number one thing in Brockton, the people that live and work in the city of Brockton. That's it. That's the asset. And I've said it before, and Chris, you've heard me. If Brockton was a stock, everybody should buy it because the return on our investment is real. Simple as that. So uh, let's just roll up the sleeves and get the job done. Simple as that. Excellent. Excellent. Questions, Rob, do we want to talk about some of the future developments in our pipeline? Uh, that's probably for a later date, but just to give a little teaser, we have a number of approximately 400 units um, in the pipeline. Yeah, we have a little, uh, actually a little over 400 units that are in the development pipeline that, um, you know, Robert and I are, are negotiating with. Um, we were, um, I, I think, pretty savvy when um, we created this urban renewal district. Um, the BRA put together uh, what's called a request for qualifications and put that out to the market in particular. Uh, real estate developers, um, large and small, existing property owners, and said, okay, here are the opportunities that we've identified. We want to work with you to make these happen. And we have a, a group of pre-qualified pre developers mm -hmm. that include um, both local, minority-owned, um, regional Reg developers, national, national developers um, that are interested in Brockton. And we continue to add more developers to that soup. Um, so there's a, a stable of, um, of, of people who are willing to make investments in the city. We just finished up a feasibility study. Um, we were uh, awarded funding from uh, Mass Development, and the feasibility study is looking at the block on um, Frederick Douglass Avenue that's bound by Frederick Douglass, Warren, and L Street. Um, a, a developer that, that we're working with, the Day Brothers, is interested in constructing a um, a, a 60,000 square foot vertical greenhouse and about 100 uh, residential units on top of a future parking garage. Now, that's going to require some investment, but, um, you know, that's something that, that we're now um, applying to the state, looking for assistance mm -hmm. uh, to make that happen. Um, it, it took a while to get the, the carpenter garage together. But once that money was available to us, um, you can see the development that is occurring around that with Trinity's um, reinvestment of 113 uh, or 100, 100, uh, 113 units, uh, additional units. Um, we see uh, Ted Carmen and Concord Square's <laughs> development. Um, you're negotiating with a couple of other people for property that's right across the street. Um, this wouldn't have happened without the state's um, investment and the city stepping up to the plate and matching the state's funds. We hope to uh, continue that uh, on Frederick Douglass, but um, you know that's one of the projects. We have a, a developer on um, Main Street that we're working with who has purchased the old uh, Kennedy Dry Goods building. It's where Elvira's is. Um, he's going to be using uh, historic tax credits to rehab that building and bring in new um, residential development with commercial on the first floor. And we have a developer across the street that we're negotiating with um, and, and we're working our way down the block. And it won't be long, actually, until the uh, 30, 36 Main Street uh, will become available. It's, a, it's the state office building where the Department of Unemployment Assistance is currently located. 
They're moving into a brand new facility that is at 226 Main Street, which is Maine and Belmont. Um, so that building is going to become available. And um, uh, we hope to see commercial development. I'd, I'd love to keep that all commercial. Agreed. And then um, uh, 126 or 127 Center Street is mm -hmm. a uh, another uh, development. I think it's 40 units, 40 units. Uh, that's mm -hmm. under, you know, will potentially be under construction in the very near future. Mm -hmm. uh, with, with the other, the other thing I, I think we want to share, Rob, is we've met with a gentleman named Steve Young. Uh, he is a, a developer. He bought the old Bryant Hotel. Yes. Um, he is uh, renovating that. Uh, it's a big investment, probably four to five million dollars. He came uh, and met with, uh, with, with Rob and myself and Robin and Sydney and um, and Jim Plouffe, the building commissioner. Um, he is, uh, he's someone that's done a lot in Boston, the Beacon Hill area. Uh, and he saw the uh, historical integrity and the architectural design of that building, he grabbed it. So um, Mr. Yanoni, who's owned that for decades is still on as a consultant for a while. Um, but that, that's a, a great, great example of someone that um, wasn't familiar with Brockton, came, uh, did his due diligence, invested sizable amount of monies and the return on investment is, is going to be unbelievable, not just for him financially, but for the people that are going to be able to live there. The goal right now is to have people live in work in the city of Brockton and young professionals, as we know, are moving here because the price point, the rent is cheaper in Brockton compared to Southie and Dorchester and Charlestown and Braintree and Quincy. They're coming here. I was on a call with Mayor Coogan uh, from Fall River this morning and, uh, and, and Mayor Mitchell from New Bedford. And they were saying, well, our rents are, are, are cheaper than you. Uh, and that's okay, right? But we can get into South Station in 35 minutes, uh, you know, from downtown Brockton. So um, I just, I just want to share anything that I know. It's all about being transparent. Uh, but I want everybody to know that people are truly investing millions and millions of dollars into Brockton. And that's awesome. Yeah. And while we've highlighted and talked a lot about the, uh, the housing component, um, we just ran some numbers and there's over, we're adding another 268,000 square feet of commercial well, space from. In the last, uh, let's say 10 years, this, the downtown has seen um, 276,000 square feet of rehabilitated or new commercial space. So that includes um, Trinity on Main. It includes the new state office building at 226. It includes the major investment that um, uh, W.B. Mason has made uh, to rehabilitate and to, to keep those jobs um, in downtown Brockton. And, um, it, and it includes um, Brockton Beer. Right. right. So we got something for everybody. Excellent. It, it, it's all great. Great news. You were on the last meeting where a couple of folks spoke up about uh, ownership. They want to buy into Brockton. As, as the mayor said, if it's a stock, they want to be part of it. Is there any movement in terms of regulations to encourage condos instead of apartments? I think, Chris, we're looking at and analyzing that now. As you know, the city has a down payment assistance program that doesn't include condos. We are now reevaluating that and looking at that now only because some Condo market is coming back in Brockton. And you know, at one point in time, it was a very weak market. Um, dealing with condos also has a, a lot of stipulations that go with it for down payment assistance and, and condo association and fees. So we, we're we looking at that and analyzing that. Uh, we'll probably have to go to my board and the mayor to make some modifications to the down payment assistance program. I have two people from my staff here today that work with the down payment assistance. I know neighbor works, Cindy Pendergrass is on and they've always talked about, we really need to look at that now. It's the market is changing. Um, I, I also want to say that um, the Commonwealth has a new, um, is it Community Builders? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, program that um, helps underwrite the, the cost of construction for condominiums uh, that is, is workforce based. And we are working with one of the um, current developers um, that we have downtown for a next phase that would include condos. So it's called the uh, the Commonwealth Builder Program. We learned about it this Builder. morning. Yes, yes. Well, Chris, to answer your questions, yes, we're looking. We there's no tool we won't add to our toolbox. Okay. 
That's great. Last question. I know the governor was up in uh, North Shore, Lowell and Lawrence on Monday talking about a $1 billion uh, investment in, in sewerage and uh, water expansion and, and rehab of older cities uh, facilities. You know, might there be a chance for intermunicipal agreements with uh, industrial parks or, or city districts that can provide jobs to Brockton residents uh, in the surrounding towns? I know there's been some talk about Avon. Avon would love to have it in the industrial park. Eastern would love to have it. And it would really open up additional commercial uh, space and jobs and diversify the region's economy. Yeah, I mean, I could talk about that because as mayor, I could do IMAs and I, I have honored IMAs that were in the queue from previous mayors. But I'm the mayor of Brockton, not the mayor of West Bridgewater or Easton or Avon or Abington. So I want to make sure that the integrity of development in Brockton is met. And right now, uh, I mean, we can sell water, right? With Aquaria, we could definitely sell water. Uh, well, it wouldn't be us, it'd be the owner of the Aquaria project. But sewer is at a premium right now. Um, you know, we have to remember that um, it's not just the core of the city. Uh, every time I have a developer come, I talk about the Kmart Plaza down in Council Nicastro's ward or up in the village uh, and, and in Council President's ward. So um, we need to continue to make sure that um, Brockton development is met. Um, as you know, on Thatcher Street, there's gonna be a huge development over there as well under a 40 hour, 40 hour project. So Chris, I wouldn't discount um, you know, future growth, but I, I've told you that I've, I've worked with Larry Rowley, worked with Dave Norton and uh, the commissioner is Pat Hill. And so right now we've put a pause on those because we have to really see where we're going with development. Uh, to protect the integrity of the city of Brock and the development here within the uh, boundaries of the city. Councilor Farwell, I see you have your hand up. Uh, he, he can unmute he can himself. himself. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. You have to unmute. Here you go. Yeah. Uh, affordable senior housing. There, there are a lot of people who would like to downsize, they'd like to stay in Brockton. And um, as you proceed with Northeast, Southwest plans and evaluations in the city and you meet with developers, just throw that open every once in a while because I do think there's a market for that. I do think that there are a lot of people that are older who would like to be in Brockton, particularly with all the amenities that will be forthcoming. Um, so that should be a consideration. Um, that's a very good point, um, Councillor. Uh, we have met with um, Janice over at the uh, Council on Aging, and um, she is bombarded with um, inquiries on, on people who are looking for um, affordable senior housing. And that's something that we need to add to our mix downtown and in other neighborhoods across the city. Agreed. I know uh, one of the ones we're working with, with is once again with Neighbor Works, is the Lincoln. Is it Not the Lincoln one. School? Yes. Yeah, it's the Lincoln School that we've been working with. And um, I know Tim is Tim is here. Tim, um, any update Swing on the around, Lincoln Tim. School? You can put, yeah, you yeah, can come stand up. behind us. us. Come yeah. on. And <laughs> you can tell us. I mean, we know that the Neighbor Works has an agreement Hello. with the city. Um, uh, yeah, that's right. So we're, we'll be converting the Lincoln School into 37 units of affordable senior housing. Um, Starting when? We expect to begin construction by the end of this year. Um, it is in round with DHCD now. And we have raised about one and a half million dollars in um, state historic credits to support this project. Excellent. So really okay. And so those are the kind of developments in, in Council Farwell. Thank you for bringing that up because I've always said, um, I don't know if we're late to the party of doing um, reuse of a lot of old schools. I know there's the Howard, there's the, there's one that's over off of Belmont. I think it's the Gilmore. Um, there are, or not the Gilmore, I forget what it women, is. The but Women Elementary School, Manaman Street and Gifford. Yeah, those are excellent locations for reuse for senior housing. They're in neighborhoods, um, which makes a lot of sense. But once again, we need developers and those will come forward to actually do that. But Again, that's a that's another priority, I think, for the city, especially as those of us who are getting older um, and downsizing. Yeah. And again, for those uh, who may be camera shy, um, please use the chat function um, to give us suggestions on um, projects that we should take a look at in our, you know, over the next five years. 
and um, things that you would like to see improved in downtown. I know J uh, Janet Trash has something in chat. Janet, I don't understand your question. It says we've been tossing. I don't know what we're tossing, Janet. I, I, I blew it, so forget <laughs> it. But what I, what I, I was going to say is, uh, particularly when we talk about the schools, I know we talked about um, the school, um, which, which is the one that we just talked about that you went to, I think, Mayor. Um, the Whitman. Yeah, I, I, with the Whitman the, Elementary the Whitman. School, and Mr. Falwell uh, was there, and his grandfather was the principal of the Whitman. Yeah. I will tell you, though, the Whitman wow. School, and I love the school, uh, it is in really rough shape. It's been abandoned for years. The roof caved in under a blizzard. Um, and again, we, we've walked that site and it's, it's, it's not ideal for development. Okay. But um, we also talked about it, and I guess that's not going to work either, but about 10 years ago, we really had uh, an impetus to have a teen center in Brockton. And that was one of the places we talked about. And we really do need something in Brockton. We, I heard somebody say there's a conservatory being planned. Um, and the Rose Conservatory that's up at Christ Congo Church. Um, I don't know how they're doing, but we really need activities like that for our kids. And uh, so teen centers, good stuff happening for our kids. We have a lot of good things happening for adults and old people, but um, not so much for our kids. So just to work on that a little bit. Just for point of information for everybody, um, the Goddard School uh, off of Main Street near Dover Street near the, near the old services, which is a charity guild. Um, myself and Superintendent Thomas uh, invested money. That, that is a community center right now. Um, we've actually invested a lot of money and we're doing some ESSER free federal money for uh, a, an exterior um, uh, elevator uh, so that we can utilize that. But there are programs, ESL, there's some uh, ethnic uh, organizations that utilize that. But I agree with what Mrs. Trash just said. We need to continue to uh, come up with some creative ideas that, that help everybody in Brockton. Excellent. I do have another, um, I guess, another comment observation from Ms. Sylvia. Silver, Silvera. Um, good evening. Using the amazing Weymouth Union Point Sports Complex, is there something similar planned for Campello area? I don't know if anybody wants to take that. I know that over at the Kmart Plaza, there is a facility. I don't think it's a sports center. Is that where they have the, they the trampoline, it? trampoline, trampoline park. jumping yeah. park? Yeah. Uh, it's the old uh, supermarket down there, the old Shaw's. Uh, some of it sits in the city of Brock and some sits in uh, West Bridgewater. It's actually really, really cool. Um, in terms of a dome, like in uh, uh, the town of Bridgewater, um, there is a proposal uh, that uh, State Rep Dubois, when she was city council, we did a zoning change. It was acquired some land up there. There is a proposal to do a sports complex up there. Uh, in terms of Campella, I haven't been, um, uh, that hasn't been brought to, 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 to my, my office yet. Um, I do work with Council Nicastro on a regular basis. Um, you know, we, we need to try to figure out, um, you know, how we can do that here in the city of Brockton. Um, I do know uh, that the school committee and the city council uh, agreed to uh, abandon some land, um, which is the old, uh, the old field on West Elm Street. Um, and an RFP was put out. Um, so I do suspect that we're gonna see some uh, good improvements for uh, extracurricular activities, but also athletics uh, within the city of Brockton. We will be using again, federal money. Um, and then uh, we also have to take care of the underground. Um, a lot of our pipes are from the 1880s and 1890s. So uh, city council has been working with, uh, with, with my office uh, to come up with some creative ways. Um, but the developers aren't gonna come to Brockton if we don't um, make sure that the underground uh, facilities are appropriate as well. Uh, and we need to continue to do that with uh, upgrades to piping. Excellent. Can I talk yes. about the Sure. Let me just take this one yes. question because I know we do have another six minutes. Uh, I would like to see improved walking and biking infrastructure and facilities, especially with all the residents being built downtown. Uh, and green space. This is always a concern for us when wherever we're planning and doing development is the availability of green space and walking and biking, um, outdoor space. I'm going to have Marcus from the Boys and Girls Club. Marcus, why don't you step right in here? And 
Yeah, so I, just wanted to, I know, Janet, you talked about Teen Center and how, the importance of that. So the Boys yep. and Girls Club, we are currently in the process. I know the mayor just talked about the key field, the RP that came out. So we're in the process of working on that, where we would take a piece of that property, create a new facility with the Boys and Girls Club. We were gifted a $5 million um, gift at the beginning of the pandemic for our new building. So it's going to be a $12 million project that we're getting closer and closer to uh, securing those funds for. So that'll be a building for our younger ones. And our current building, which is on 233 Warren Ave, will become our new teen facility. That building will be able to occupy up to 200 teens in that building. Um, so right now we have about 75 teens in our program, um, but we're running out of space. Um, so we'll be able to occupy 200 teens. We charge $35 on annual fee for teens. Um, and then for the most part, we're able to find grants and scholarships to cover those costs for them. So they have to come at no cost at all, as well as summer camp, vacation camps, all those great things. Um, so we are focused on teens. We understand the need for them to have a safe place to go after school. So that way they don't get into any type of uh, you know mischief. <laughs> Thank you, Marcus. We appreciate that. And all that the Boys and Girls Club do. I know that uh, the mayor is strong supporter of the Boys and Girls Club. We actually fund a lot of their activities. Um, here's another good question from Mr. Silvera, also Evolve. Rob, I'm going to let you take this because this is right up here. One of the things we've been talking about for a while now, um, at least for the last. Thoughts on bringing back some form of performing arts or theater cinema downtown? Mm. Um, that's a good question. Um, at one time, Brockton had five, oops, I'm a half off camera, um, had five theaters downtown. Um, the, the mayor shared a story just the other day that I did not know, but uh, it was at the Capitol Theater, sir, where your parents met? Center Theater. Center. 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 I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be here without the Center Theater. My mom was a ticket collector. My dad was an usher. I wouldn't be here. <laughs> So obviously performing arts is uh, very important to the health of a community. Mm -hmm. um, that is something that we should, should take a look at. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Excellent. We have another three minutes. Um, once Trash. again, I just want, to, want everyone to know that this is the one of many uh, public meetings we'll be having in regards to downtown. And as I said, we'll be reporting out to the city council, to the city council in the spring as well. Uh, we're working on our annual uh, report to the state as I speak. A um, couple of notes: the Brockton Redevelopment Authority is having its annual meeting via Zoom on Wednesday, March second, two thirty to four. Um, keep that date open. Everyone is invited. The mayor is our guest speaker. Uh, looking forward to that. We hold that every year. Um, Mr. Saddleman, any comments in our last two minutes? I grew up here and you're just doing a great job. It's amazing what's happened just over the last couple of years. Yeah. Okay. Can I just say one thing, uh, Mr. Saddleman, uh, I want to say thank you. Willie Saddleman's uh, business has been in the city of Brockton for a century, a hundred, hundred years. Think about that. So um, we need to continue to honor all the businesses, but also attract new businesses. Uh, Eval asked a great question. I want to have a community theater in Brockton. I want the Brockton Symphony Orchestra to play back in Brockton, not in Easton at all in Reims. Uh, so there's a lot we need to do, but we can only do it together because we're better together. So I want to thank uh, everybody for joining tonight, and it is an honor and privilege to join you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I do want to give a shout out um, to the Downtown Brockton Association. They have their monthly meeting tomorrow at um, 1130 over Zoom. And uh, it's important um, for those stakeholders to become involved with the Downtown Brockton Association. One of the things that we're going to be talking about is um, creating a downtown business uh, improvement district um, that would help fund uh, additional services that uh, aren't currently available downtown mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and some sort of programming entity that um, can make sure that we keep um, activities happening downtown, utilize the um, Prava area, utilize the um, uh, City Hall Plaza, 
um, find public space to make things happen. Um, it's going to be very important. And while we're ending this public meeting in less than 30 seconds, I'm sure, um, please give us your comments. BRA, BRA's website. I have my staff here. It's always up and running. I want to introduce also, because I didn't initially, Dan, Janet Trass is a member of the CAC, the Citizens Advisory Committee. I have Frank Gurley behind me, who is also a member. Um, Nelson Fernandez, who is a member. Um, um, Eunice Depina, who's also a member. And Jasmine is a member of the CAC. Jasmine, thank you guys for all your time, effort. Um, this is really, I mean, we have a volunteer CAC. Believe me, it's a lot of work. <laughs> And they will tell you, um, coming to the board meeting and doing presentations, in, especially around urban redevelopment and also re land reuse. Um, and I think, yes, it's about time we expand the CAC. It is a lot of work with volunteers. So once again, I'd like to thank the mayor. Mayor, I didn't know you were gonna stay with me the whole way, but thank you, sir. I couldn't miss this. This is unbelievable. And just a shout out to all the uh, volunteers that serve on the planning board and the conservation and ZBA, I see Mr. Sweeney's on. So if anybody's interested in joining a, a board of commission, please send your resume and your letter of interest to our office because terms always expire. Thank you. And thank you city council members as well. Um, excellent. I appreciate everyone's time. Have a good evening. Mm -hmm. I think we're off, off the air now anyway, but once again, you can always reach me at the Brockton Redevelopment Authority website or R. Jenkins at BrocktonRedevelopmentAuthority.com. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Have a good evening.